Welcome to the first episode of Long Tail Programming with Shamal Chandra. Now, today's topic is going to be Swift UI versus traditional Swift. And as, a, as you might know from Apple's um, development website, there's this clear demarcation between the two types of Swift. There's the declarative Swift UI versus the procedural Swift. Now the difference is not just in the name, it's how they go about implementing different primitives, different type of constructs, and different ways to um, delegate back to uh, certain function calls on, on a event notice. Now, first of all, uh, Swift, U, Swift came about in 2014 uh, introduced during the, the the Apple Developer Conference, and then it went later went open source, a subset of it. Um, and I myself have been involved with Swift UI uh, as a Swift.org mentee for three years. Um, besides that, and this is prior to this conversation. This is for three three years, two of which were very successful or one of which was very successful. And um, what, I, what I learned was uh, that Swift can do amazing stuff if you know how to utilize the different components, the different frameworks, the different technologies that are built into the language that you can simply import. And the cool thing about Swift UI is that you, you don't have to worry about different layouts. You don't have to worry about if it's a watch, if it's a TV, if it's a if it's a Vision OS, or if it's if it's iPad or iOS or Mac OS X. What you have to worry about is your layout on the screen, just like an HTML web page. Similar to that, there's the head, which has all the information in terms of state variables and um, other, other types of variables. And then there's the body, which is contains all the contents of the layout of the different types of containers, which have different modifiers in an object-oriented fashion, which can be set to, to call back or to do something on event change. And those state variables are very important too, because they allow you to change diff other parts of the, the code based on changes inside the code. Like for instance, you press a button, it goes from on to off, it, it triggers another component to change. This is this is really cool stuff. And this has been around since Swift UI came out roughly late 2020, uh, late, um, around before 2020, but I think in 2018 or 2017. And what I learned was when I first used Swift UI first time in 2018 or 2019, was that it was really in, unique in the way that you have this complete control. If you know all the modifiers for every single container, you can do amazing things. You can do sensational programming in a very little time, get the job done, and go on ahead and do your rest of your work for the day. The planning is surreal. Everything is sensational. But... If you want to do the traditional procedural programming similar to Objective C that was started, um, that came out in 1984, but then was uh, added to the Apple um, spectrum later on um, when when um, Apple bought or um, Apple bought or merged with the Next Step or Next, you know. So. If you compare that with the traditional carbon C that was there before, there's a big difference. And most of the apps that I've seen are implemented by Apple in Objective C, and now they're shifting them to Swift, and eventually they'll shift them to Swift UI. This is all on the forums. They talk about this openly, the Apple community, the Apple engineers, everything. So, Okay, why why would you go to Swift or Swift UI in the first place? That's the first question someone asked me. Okay, I have this Python code. Okay, it runs sensationally fast. 
I can parallelize, I can, I can concurrentize it. Why would I go with Swift or Swift UI? Well, there are more than five plus platforms or six, six platforms now that you can go to that it can work on with minimal changes. You can use preprocessor macros to make your life simple. And another thing, it's all supported by Apple. You go to the, you go to the Stack Overflow, you go to the Quora, you go to the, the large language model such as um, uh, Poe from Quora, and you get all sorts of um, boilerplate code, okay? Now, why would you recommend uh, Swift UI over Swift? Well, Swift UI has um, more des design patterns that are newer and more of the, the code that's being developed open source in GitHub is for Swift UI. Why would you go with Swift, original Swift? Well, if it gets too com complicated and there's no examples either through LM or through the, the, the websites or the Stack Overflow, you have to wait a non-descriptive time to wait for that non kind of unknown amount of time to get a response back on Stack Overflow for Swift then you have to deal with what is there. So you have to switch between the two. And you can even include both in one. I've seen examples where they've included UI kit and Swift UI, or App Kit and Swift UI, or Cocoa, they call it now. So why why do you like why do you like Swift? What what makes you go to the Apple platform? Well, my first reaction to that question is, well, it's, it's, it's been there for so many years. I've been using Objective-C since 2009 when I first got my first iMac. It's an amazing product. When I got the Xcode, Xcode was separate from Interface Builder. And then sooner or later, they fused the two together to make them one. And it's just amazing how much progress they've made in terms of these different frameworks from charting to database. Now they have Swift data compared vis-a-vis -vis to core data, which was much more complicated versus the Swift data, which is more like persistence. If you compare it to some sort of um, uh, spring or hibernate type of um, framework from the past, it's, it's similar to that. It's like object oriented uh, persistence. Okay. Now, what, what is so cool about Swift, Swift UI? There's, there's not that many packages out there. Okay. If you compare it to, uh, Python, Python has a sensational tens of thousands or maybe hundreds of thousands of packages, but not all of them are updated for the latest and greatest version of Python, which is Python 3.12 at this time, at the time of this recording, as far as I know. And Swift, on the other hand, doesn't really maintain that much data or that much information about how to create your own package and how to put it on the CocoaPods. CocoaPods, they put it, put the information, but not that much information about that. So you have to prog, um, um, prod uh, the right sources, which is the LLM or the Stack Overflow and get the, get the information. It should not be that difficult in hindsight, but it might be a lot more work than you might think it is. But at the end of the day, once it's ready to go, it's ready to go. And it'll work on all the platforms if you make sure you write it correctly. So, Lots of people in the past were interested in Swift because it had storyboards. Well, I didn't really like that storyboard feeling. So I wrote a blog post in 2013 where I said, wouldn't it be awesome if you could do everything programmatically instead of WYSIWYG dragging containers or dragging widgets onto the, the phone or onto the Mac OS X view controller? Well... That's where Swift UI came into play. Because Swift UI 
allows you to do everything in a way that's independent of how it's implemented on the particular device. Okay, If you use it correctly, if you use the fonts, the sizes, the styles, everything, it's, it's a lot of work, but it gets tons and tons of fun once you have. So, so that's, that's the story of uh, Swift, Swift UI. But what's the future of Swift, Swift UI? I think, I think there's a big future as the release of the Vision Pro pre-ordering yesterday. It's going to get really exciting for both Apple and for its, its partners and for the App Store developers. Okay. Because, first of all, you can imagine, I, I read on the news today, there were the lowest, um, lowest tier of, of uh, Apple products, um, which was the 3500 for the Vision Pro, were all sold out, which tells you there's tremendous consumer traction for these devices, which tells you that if you create for the iOS, iPad OS, or Mac OS X, you can easily port it to Vision OS and com com completely blow out the competition, blow out your your um, comp competitors. If you're in a, a very heatly contested um, field or make amazing demos that will make amazing long, long range project products that can be used by people for the rest of your, their lives. Because this 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 uh, Vision Pro seems like it's going to be there for quite some time. Especially if you have the extra battery dongle, especially if you get the the high range ones with one terabyte, this is a sensational product, you know. And this is where no one has gone before, in my opinion, in terms of mixed reality. On the other hand, someone could say, well, what, what? augmented reality was already implemented in the iPad and iOS, right? Because you have the true depth sensor on the special types of them, you know, for for four foot to five foot range. Well, it's a different story here. The 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 the, the materials that are used, the the parts that are used are different. So you have to compare and contrast. Okay. So why why would you use Apple products? Uh, why would you use the Apple you look and feel? Uh, because it's just well well created. It's well done, and hopefully it will it will m inspire you to invent something new, fill a new niche in the market. That's what I think is amazing about Apple products, and that's what I want to share with you today on this blog today. Long tail programming with Shamal Chandra, episode one for twenty twenty four. And hopefully I'll see you back next week and I'll, I'll tell more tales about the Swift, Swift UI. Until then, keep on hacking.